proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk. Hello, welcome back to Furious Driving, and we're back with Quentin, the hateful eight, once again. And this time, it's not me getting angry with it, it's someone else. Look, there are two cups of tea in the engine bay. Well, I have finally relented and given up trying to fix whatever is stopping this thing from starting and called in a professional. Uh, Vince from Gandalf Electrics is currently underneath the car, checking the wiring to the fuel pump, but he's also been checking out this. He did turn up yesterday and start looking at it, but the rain was just so hard we had to call it and, uh, and come back again today. Uh, however, he did notice the weak spark on this thing, which was something I hadn't actually sorted out when I first started servicing it. If you cast your mind back to when we first got this car and started this stupid project, um, we did so much to it. We did the cam belt, we did the alternator, we did all kinds of other service stuff, but we never actually did the distributor and spark plugs because it started and because we were being distracted by, by bigger problems. And you know, weak sparks, so I have just had a delivery a second ago, just before we arrived in fact, so I didn't get a chance to fit it. New spark plugs, new distributor cap, and a new rotor arm, and more importantly, new windscreen wipers. Um, all of that will be going on imminently. He's currently lying under the car, so we'll catch up in a second and see how things are looking. Vince has gone back under the car and left me in charge of these relays. I could be an assistant for the day, this is good. Because he's discovered there's no earth going to the pump, that's why it's not starting, and there's also no earth on these two relays here. So we're going to push them and see what happens. Right, so. Keep holding it. Yep. So let's see if it makes any difference to the um, earth situation down the back of the car. Okay, and the other one? Push and hold? Yep, that's pushed and held. Right, let go. Okay. And again? Same one? Yep. Okay. Okay, released? Yep, that's it, fine. I think the bad earth was on this plug, hopefully, but it still, it could still be missing an earth, which is why mm. that um, relay isn't energising. Yeah. So that could be, I don't, like I say, it's not a power issue. So yeah, bolt drop test. Um, it's a way of testing if you've got a good connection. Hmm. I was explaining the continuity, yeah, yeah. No, not really ideal for testing cars. Um, so we've got one probe, we've got the multimeter on bolts, um, and then we've got one probe on the body earth, and then I've disconnected the earth to the battery. So most people, you'd probably, or most people would probably assume you're not gonna get anything, any reading when you connect them two together. But I'm going from earth to earth, and you've got 12.6 volts. All a multimeter does is tell you a difference in voltage between two points. And there's always, people assume that there isn't 12 volts on the negative side of the battery, but what's on the positive side is still on the negative side. So you've still got 12 volts here. So yeah, essentially the power comes in and out of the battery. Just testing the point between there and there. Bad earth, if I test it on that, you'll have nothing, zero volts, mm -hmm. which means that connection is then good. If I put that back on there, you'll then again, nothing. Zero volts, which means it's a good connection. Right, breakthrough and not a breakthrough has happened. First of all, we've identified the reason there was no earth on this unit down here, because these two bottom uh, relays weren't getting any earth on them. Um, bit of process of elimination, and thank you to Ashley, who sent through a uh, wiring diagram with some colours on it. We found a bad earth at the back of the car, which is now solved. However, even though there's now 12 volts to the pump, it's still not actually running. The battery is a bit flat, but that should be tall, but it's gone down a bit, but that, that is voltage directly to the pump and that we're an seeing. Earth and an earth directly from the pump. So the earth and so the positive and negative are both perfectly good to the pump. If one of them wasn't working, if there was no earth, I'd get no voltage. If there was no power, I'd get no voltage. But when you crank, pops up, 10 volts. And that's only because the battery's running a bit low. But yeah, positive and negative is there, but the pump is still so not running. Potentially got a dead pump then? A dead new pump? Yeah, that potentially could have been to do with wiring issues. It's unlikely, but yeah. 
unfortunately, it Sorry. is, yeah. Whip the I've, pump. I've also given the pump a little technical tap. <laughs> so, <laughs> Percussive maintenance. Yes, yeah, um, yeah, but it's still nothing. So, so I'm, I'm going to assume it's a, a duff pump. Just taking the pump back out again. This is the new pump. It's only fitted a few weeks ago. So we have a solution and guess what? It's a two-parter. First of all, it was the fuel pump again having failed, which is odd to say the least, but I wouldn't have found that first of all because there was also a bad earth. Um, one of the few the earth blocks I had uh, had a look at and wheeled was still a bad earth. So it was a combined thing. So I could have fixed the earth and kept on looking because I wouldn't have known that the fuel pump was broken and I could have replaced the fuel pump and it wouldn't have worked because the bad earth was there. But uh, Vince managed to diagnose exactly where the fault was in the end and I'm, we've now taken the fuel pump back out as you can see so I'm going to take it back to the shop and see if we can get a refund on that or an exchange item because they shouldn't fail that quickly. Right so here we have a new pump they have exchanged it whoops they've exchanged it down at JR that's 200 and 15 quid of new pump. Before I go and go to the trouble of installing it in the car, I'm just going to plug it into the loom behind the exhaust pipe and uh, check it does actually fire up. <laughs> Make sure there's no other problems that haven't been found. I said the um, Vince, the auto electrician, Gandalf, the company name, he did find there was an earth problem in the engine bay and there's an earth problem down here in the back of the car. So there were two problems plus the broken pump. This car is just a winner, isn't it? Um, so once again, I've siphoned all the fuel out of the tank. I've got two more gallons of fresh V power down there, waiting to go back in the tank. So hopefully it'll all be fine in a very short amount of time. I'll leave you now while I climb under the car and try and find that wire. Right, I've managed to lean underneath there, plug it in. I do need to jack it up now so I can wrap lots of insulation tape around the plug, keep it waterproof and cable tight all out of the way so it's not going to snag and cause trouble. I was meant to change the rotor arm and uh, distributor cap over the weekend, but I got waylaid with the V8 instead. So, but it was, it was running anyway, so I'm sure that'll be fine. So now, the moment of truth. Ouch, ouch. Keep bashing myself on the door mirror of the W123, which is also being neglected under here. So let's see if this works. Oh, come on. Would you believe it's got a flat battery now? I don't know why that wasn't cranking over. I've plugged in this auto wit um, capacitor thingy. Uh, it was showing 12 volts on here. This is now fully charged, getting ready. Let's go and see if we can crank it this time. Whoa, got 10 seconds. That doesn't normally include an optical course. Nearly. nearly going. It's almost there. Why aren't you starting, your stupid car? What's broken now? I can hear the pump, so I know it's working because it's the only thing around the back of the car that makes any noise when the car's not turned on or when it's trying to fire up. Oh, stupid car. It has just got incredibly dark in about 20 minutes flat, but whilst it was getting darker, I quickly changed over the rotor arm and distributor cap, which I was going to anyway, and they look really, really manky because um, when Vince checked the spark, it was showing a really, really weak spark. So these cannot be helping. If it still won't fire, I'll have to go and get a new coil for it. But let's try it now. Fingers are firmly crossed this time. There we go, can hear the pump. I'm wondering if I've not put enough petrol back in this car. I drained it to the very last dreg. I mean, there was just fumes in there this time. Um, and I only put two gallons of V-Power back in, so I'm just wondering if I've actually drained it too far, and there's always like two gallons before you even start measuring fuel. So I'll kind of put a couple more gallons in first thing in the morning and try again. Right, it's dark now and cold. Stupid car. Right, so the mad thing is this car was starting before the fuel pump failed, so I don't know why it's not starting now. It's got a new uh, rotor arm and distributor on there now. I should have bought a new coil, but I forgot to order it. Um, I'm gonna give the last of my easy start a blast in there. This can is taking hammering on this and the W123 and see if it will start, see if that's fuel or spark. Okay, that's spark, so probably the coil's failed. Let's try a quick spark test. I think I might have just solved this. <laughs> Boy, is my face red. You know how it's absolutely pitch dark when I changed the um, rotor arm distributor last night? 
and as we're working by the light of a torch, what can you see that I can see that tells you why this car's got no spark? It's gone from a weak spark to zero spark. Yeah, that's the king lead. Ah, there's a lesson there about working in adequate conditions, not in the pitch dark. Right, 19th time lucky. Uh -huh. So this now has got another two gallons, it's got about four gallons of fuel in it now. So will this, let's do a knock. Fuel gauge still isn't moving, okay. That probably means in that case that the uh, plug isn't in properly. Right, I've just taken out and reseated the fuel pump because uh, I was basically giving it a wiggle because I was thinking maybe the pickup tube was snagging because there's a couple of internal pipes inside the tank, like breathers. Let's give this a try. Yay! First time. Right, let's turn the key again once more just for the novelty value of it. Hooray, it's alive, thank goodness. There you go, success, a running K series at last. Obviously, I need to say a big thank you to Vince, Gandalf Auto Electricals, who came and solved the problems here. So, thank you, Vince, that was great. Um, yeah, just need to figure out why the fuel gauge isn't working now. I wonder if it's another broken wire. I might need to call your services back again for that one because I can't drive around with no fuel gauge. That would be annoying. And of course, this is also the first time we've seen it running with the new exhaust pipe on it because it got pushed back into its parking bay previously. It's alive again, fantastic, at last. It's no longer dead. Now I can go back to making sure it's ready for an MOT and try and get it booked into one later in this week, perhaps. Fingers crossed, we'll see how that goes. Right, well, thank you for joining me on this epic adventure of, of Roverdom. Uh, it's getting there. It's actually getting there. As soon as the MOT is ready on it, I can drive it down to the trimmers and get the hood sorted out. And then I can drive it down to the painters and get the bonnet and front wing sorted out. Yeah, there's, there's more to do. <laughs> this quick project isn't being very quick after all. But thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe and do that bell notification thing so you find out more stuff when next things are happening. Ah, you know, the usual routines. It's YouTube, you've been here before. Take care, everyone. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.